All right, I know some are still getting coffee and all that, but um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, my name is Zach, and I'm the lead pastor here at the Rock Church. I want to say thank you for coming today. Um, hope you're having a good time. And if you need to refill on coffee, there's more of that back there. But um, So did everybody enjoy an extra hour of sleep? Yeah. 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 Hey, just a little, um, little stat, you know, um, I've, I've been a pastor um, for over 10 years, and just so you know, every time fall, um, whenever the fallback time happens, time change, everybody's typically late. Isn't that funny? Um, and, and so I think that's pretty funny. So um, anyway, if you missed any of the previous messages, um, whether you're here or watching online, you can check those out at rockchurchspokane.com. Um, and stay up to date with everything that's going on. So um, if you're a first-time guest with us today, I want to let you know this is a great time to come. We're starting this brand-new series called Purpose. Um, and, you know, one of, the, um, one of the most searched questions in the Spokane area is, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? So we're going to look at some of these things um, and looking at purpose and, and let you sh um, hear about things in my life and also um, things that I believe could be game changers for you. So um, this is really cool. If you have a, um, the program that you were given at the door inside of there has those um, connect cards and new here cards, um, and, and you can fill those out, then drop those in the connection box in the back. Also, um, if you've been with us for a little while, uh, a little over a month ago, we became our own local church, and we started as a campus of a church, but now we have local leaders and everything like that to, to help um, make decisions and, and things that are going on. And if you've been here, you know that space has been an um, issue for us, which that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, but I'm, I'm glad that we have two services now, and different people are, are going to different ones to help um, with space, and that's really cool. So if, you made, if you're one of the ones that made the sacrifice, thanks for doing that. Um, it is our goal to be a place where you can be real, be real with God and real with others. Um, and it's our goal um, to reach out to the community and serve our community the best way that we can. Um, and we want you to be a part of that. So simply, if you're here right now or watching online, what you can do is get out your phone, open up Facebook, um, and then if you check into the Rock Church, we'll provide meals and things for Open Doors, which is a Mercy Family Homeless Shelter. Um, so you can, you can help us make a difference in the community simply by opening your phone and checking in on Facebook. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. So... Um, Man, purpose, talking about purpose, um, we could go all over the place, you know, when it comes to me, especially being a guy. Um, you know, when people meet me, um, one of the things that they do, they say, hey, what do you do, right? They don't necessarily think about um, who I am, what my exactly my name is, where I'm from, or anything like that. They want to figure out um, what do you do? That's, that's what they ask because uh, a lot of times we um, find purpose and we find value in what we do for a living. Does that make sense? So, for example, if, um, if you see a greeter at Walmart, like I think that would be a pretty cool job, but I am a little weird in, in that avenue. Um, I do like to talk to a lot of people. So um, if there's a um, greeter at Walmart people view that person, or a janitor, people view that person different than a CEO of a company, right? Um, and and a, a lot of times we find value and we search for purpose in all the wrong places. And more than likely, um, if you're anything like me, you've struggled with trying to find purpose and what is the purpose of life? Am I wasting my time? Have you ever thought about some of those things? Like, is this really worth it? You know, when we say yes to one thing, we say no to a bunch of other things. Does that make sense? When we say yes to one thing, we say no to a bunch of other things. And, and so today what I want you to do is get out that 
insert that was inside the program um, that you were given at the door, and it says message notes. I want you to write down something. Um, can you do that? Uh, um, and those of you watching online, you could just get out a sheet of paper and, and write down um, the answer to this question. So um, we make sacrifices all the time, whether we realize it or not. And so what I want you to do, I want you to write down something that you've said yes to that cost you a lot. What's something you've said yes to that cost you a lot? It may not be um, a lot of financial things, but maybe you said yes. Have you ever said, let, let's do this. Have you ever said to somebody, yes, I will help you out? But then after it went on for so long, you were like, I wish I would have said no. <laughs> Has anybody ever did that? Maybe it's just me. Maybe y'all have it all together. Y'all need to be up here. That's what I know. Um, but... You know, I, I want you to write that down. What's something you said yes to that it cost you a lot? You know, we're going to look at this um, in John chapter 1, and I, I'm going to give you a little bit of historical things um, uh, and then also um, things that you and I, um, if you're anything like me, that, that you've struggle with in your life. So we're going to go through this then also give you practical steps to, to help you try to find purpose. Um, but has anybody ever been frustrated with people? <laughs> has anybody ever been hurt by people? Hey, one, one of the things that this one preacher said, his name was Adrian Rogers, and he said, ministry wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to deal with people. And it's like, yeah, that's right. And we would be fine if we didn't have to deal with people. But unfortunately, um, and the reality is that God has made it set up to where we live um, and communicate with other people. And so a lot of times um, there's past hurts that keep us um, from searching for purpose and things. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into this. All right, so let's bow our heads. We'll pray together. God, thank you. For today, um, those here and also watching online, God, I pray that you will let us find purpose. God, we search um, a lot of things um, to find value, and God, I pray that you would teach us where to do that today, God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, before we, again, before we get into this, there's one thing I want you to see. There's going to be a slide here. Um, we want you to stay connected. Um, so in the transition of us becoming our own church, um, one of the ways that we want you to stay connected is um, we will text a lot of people. So if you are a first-time guest, what we want you to do is to text VIP um, to that number there on the screen, 509-215-2614. Or if you want to stay in the loop with everything that's going on, you could just text loop. To that same number um, and, and it's it's um, you know always with what we want to do we always want to do better and to try to stay connected better and try to um, make the biggest impact that we can so things that you can pray pray for and pray with us about as a church is to help us get everybody connected um, and then also we're always looking for what the next step is for us as a church even though um, we officially only started um, as the Rock Church a little over a month ago, um, we're praying about different things, whether it's building a building on this side where we could have one service and everybody together, or looking at a different space where we could have um, one service together. Um, but anyway, you can pray with us through that. I know a lot of different people are praying with us through that. But um, going back to this um, purpose thing, um, we're going to look at this passage, but one thing I want you to see, I don't know exactly your church background, um, but what we see in Scripture is, is there's this little bit um, inside the Bible. If you go to the first book of the Bible in Genesis, what you see, um, there's basically a synopsis of how the world was made and everything that was there, and um, there's people that debate all that all the time. Here's what I can say. I wasn't there. I'm not that old. And so I have to, I have to trust something. 
Um, but anyway, there's this little bit part of the Bible. It's like this. It's Genesis 1 and 2 and 3. Um, do y'all see that? There's that little bit right there. And what we know with that is that is the beginning of how things were made. God said, let there be light. And I believe without shadow of a doubt that um, light came out at 186,000 miles per second. That's pretty fast. Um, and and w after that happened, God made man. And, and then from there, there was this relationship that God had with man um, and mankind. But there were choices that were made that were not necessarily good choices. People sought things other than God. And so whenever that happened, that connection between mankind and God was broken. And so there's just that little bit of that history there. But then what we see, the other part, which is this, and that's a whole lot, right? That is about us and the relationship between God and man being restored. And I love that the fact that the majority of the Bible, no matter what you've been taught or what you heard, but the majority of the Bible is about us um, getting back in relationship with God. And so um, I'm glad you're here today. And we're going to look at this in John chapter 1. Um, but I'm going to read some of this and then we'll talk about it. So in John chapter 1, um, starting verse 6, it says this, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And um, I don't know if you have a church background or not, but this was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist... He was a little crazy. Um, so uh, do you know anybody that's crazy? Yeah. Um, anybody met Rusty or anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but, but really, like, John the Baptist was crazy. But here's the thing about John. He was sent from God. And in verse 7, it says he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify about the light. Then in verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And so this was before Jesus was born. And John the Baptist, he went and he was telling people, hey, Jesus is coming. Hey, Jesus is coming. Um, but there were um, several um, writings um, where they talked about Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, the promised Messiah, who was going to set people free, was coming. And so John, he went and he was telling people that. Now, John the Baptist, he would use this word, and he would say, repent. And, and what repent is, is to turn away. Um, repentance, what that, what that literally means, is a change of mind. So, for example, I think this is good. I think strawberry milkshakes are good. But there comes a point where it's like, okay, now I think strawberry milkshakes are bad. And if you get three of them in one setting, that's not good, right? And so um, there, there's that repentant side. It's like, don't do that. Um, you'll get diabetes. So um, there's that, that sort of thing. Um, and so John the Baptist, he went into the world, and he was telling um, everybody uh, about the promised Messiah that was to come. But John the Baptist, he said, repent a lot and, and turn to God, turn to God, seek a relationship with God. But here's the crazy thing. Um, there was this group of people that thought they had it all together named the Pharisees. Um, there were teachers of the law, Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, but, but whenever they came to John the Baptist and they were seeking, um, whenever John the Baptist was preaching, they came, and John the Baptist, I'm going to tell you, was crazy. And he said, who warned you about the wrath to come? And, and he was talking to that group of people, and it's like, whoa, I thought you were supposed to love everybody. And, but John the Baptist was weird. He um, ate locusts and, like, honey and all kinds of stuff. It was a little weird. Um, it's much weirder than the look that you have on your face right now, I, I promise. Uh, but, but anyway, he was something I want you to see was that John the Baptist, we see in verse 6, he was a man sent from God. And a lot of times, um, you know, depending on our background, 
it's hard to find purpose, right? Um, with past hurts and things, it's hard to find purpose. And, and even with me, it, it's, it's been hard in my life to try to find purpose because um, it seemed like a lot of my friends growing up, it seemed like they had everything together. It seemed like their family was together. It seemed like they had a mom and dad and things in their house where with me, I didn't have that. I never knew my biological dad. And so um, it seemed like everybody else had things together except for me and, and my family. So when it came to purpose, it was like, surely God couldn't use me because of some of the situations that I was, was dealt. Can, can you track? Does that make sense? Have you ever felt like there's no way that God could use you because of your past? Right? We struggle with that. And so because of past hurts and things, we, it's hard to find purpose. But John the Baptist, he was here, um, and he was telling everybody about Jesus. And then in verse 10, it says this. Um, he, and now it's referring to Jesus, he was in the world, and the world was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. So what we see is that John the Baptist was telling the Jews, um, telling the Jewish people, um, hey, this Messiah is coming and he's going to be born of a virgin and all these things. But then when he came, people didn't recognize him. And, and so a lot of times um, we can be in that same form too because the Jews, they got away from God and they started focusing on, all right, what, what right things can they do to earn a relationship with God, but it was, it's different, like, um, we don't earn our way to God, we don't do that, there's, and this may be mind-blowing, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but the Bible teaches that there's nothing that you and I can do for God to love us more, holy cow, that's much different than anything else that we know, right? <laughs> Because everything else is, well, for this person to like me, I need to do something for them, right? Are you tracking? For, for, this, person, for, for this person to be faithful to me, I have to do a lot of things for them. But God's much different. And, and what happened was the Jews were focused. Um, they, they got off track, and they weren't searching for purpose. And you and I, if we're not careful because of past hurts, we could just end up start living our life and think, you know what, this is it. I wake up, I go to a sucky job, and then I come home, and then home's a mess, and then do it again tomorrow. If we're not careful, we will get in that same routine. Right? It's easy to get in that because we lack purpose. But, you know, when you find purpose, everything changes. So for, for me, um, lacking purpose lacks drive. If there's no purpose, it's easy for me to give up. If I don't see the purpose in something, then it's like, all right, why try? Why should I try? Why should I be nice to people? Why should I care for people? Like, why should I not hit this person in the throat, right? Like, how, how, come, how come I need to do this? How come I need to love them? Um, but there, we can find purpose, and there is purpose. And I want you to write down this main point. You'll see it here on the screen. But look at this. You find purpose when you spend time with God. I don't know if you've ever done that before. I don't know your church background. I don't know if this is the first time you're um, exploring this faith thing. Or maybe you have um, been on this journey for a little while. But I, I really know this, that you find purpose when you spend time with God. Because this world, according to this world, I would really have no purpose. Because we see in Scripture like the least of these, and, and that, was, that was me. The least of these. I, I, was, 
I was the drug addict's kid. I, I was all that. I came from the broken home um, and all that. And, and maybe you have a, a background where people didn't like you because of um, who you were, where you were born. You know, I was born on the wrong side of town, right? And, and so because of just how I was born, some people didn't like me. Because of the neighborhoods that I lived in, some people just didn't like me. But um, the world would say, Zach Mitten has no purpose and he's too broken. And I, I think that you and I, we share some of that. I think we share some of that, but sometimes it's hard to admit it because we want to find purpose. Have you ever thought, well, if I got this job that had this title, then people would respect me? You ever thought that? If I was the boss, if I had the manager position, then people would respect me. And then I would have purpose. But you see, you and I, we go through things. And I, I think this, I think um, God doesn't necessarily cause bad things to happen. I don't think it was um, necessarily God's, um, I don't know how it all works, but whenever I was 13 and my mom committed suicide and dealing with all that, I, I don't necessarily think that um, that was good. But I think God can use brokenness to help us find purpose. And more than likely right now, you're dealing with something, and maybe you don't want to admit it, or maybe you don't want to think about it. Um, but you and I, we've been hurt. And a lot of times we let our past hurts keep us from finding purpose. But I really believe you find purpose when you spend time with God because then you see this. You see that here in John chapter 1 that John the Baptist, he was a man sent by God. He wasn't perfect. And I, I think you, you may be the hope that somebody else needs. Have you ever thought about, well, I've struggled with this. I don't know how to handle this because I've never shared, I've never heard anybody else say they struggle with this. And then you feel like there's no way out. Have you ever felt that way? You know, we desire um, to be a place where you can be real, be real with God and real with others. And a lot of times um, I've seen, I've seen different breakthroughs happen in, in people's life whenever somebody... Um, shares, you know, I am a follower of Jesus, but I struggle with pornography. I struggle with being an alcoholic. I struggle with, uh, with control. You know, our struggles can be somebody else's hope when they see us keep going. And so what I, I want to keep going in this passage because I think this is really good. But the Jews, they didn't recognize him. But look at verse 11. It says, He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. They didn't recognize him. They didn't um, follow Jesus. And then um, in verse 12, he says, But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to, um, he, he gave them the right to be children of God to those who believe in his name, um, who were born not of natural descent or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And so everybody that believes and put their faith in Jesus, they become part of this family that's stronger and that's better than your biological family. And maybe you've experienced that. Maybe you've experienced how those of you who have been on this journey for a while, maybe you've experienced like your church family being closer than your real family and can believe in you where your real family can't. Um, but, but here, what we see, we have this right to be part of the family of God. And here's something that's really crazy. 
What's really crazy is that God, whenever we put our faith in Jesus, and it's not necessarily a prayer to pray, but instead it's God changing our hearts and um, awakening our soul. But whenever we um, put our faith in Jesus, it's not like God just says, you know, I'm just going to write off their sin and write off their rebellion and write off all their brokenness. He, he's not saying, I'm going to dismiss that. But everything has to be paid for. It's kind of like a ticket. If, if you drive, did anybody get a ticket? Has anybody got a ticket in the past six months? <laughs> oh, well, a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to know. That was, that's kind of fun. Um, but, but really, if you get a ticket, you have to pay a fine, right? But, but check this out. When it comes to you and I, if we put our faith in Jesus, um, the fine had to be paid. But the only one who could pay it is Jesus. And he said, I will pay their mess-ups. I will die on their behalf. Isn't that crazy? Think about the love of Jesus. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Like, can you imagine giving everything you have, giving your life for somebody who may or may not follow you? Who, who says, you know, I... Who, who will say, I love you, but life doesn't show that? Isn't that crazy that Jesus still says, hey, I'm still going to do it? But then what we see um, in verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is full of grace and truth. And grace is God giving what we don't deserve. And for you and I, what we... I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I don't know me. I don't deserve anything because of my past. I don't deserve to be here. Matter of fact... I don't even deserve to be alive because of choices that I made. And if you knew what I've done, I think you may not be here. But God is a God of second chances. God is a God who shows grace in giving us what we don't deserve. So I woke up this morning and God gave me breath. And then also some good coffee. Right. And, and there, there is that. Thank God for coffee. Um, but, but God gives, and you know, he gave me a wife where I wake up and she's there. Because there was a time in our marriage where she wasn't at the house anymore. I wake up and God's given me my kids. And Nicole and I, we, we struggled with having kids. We went through miscarriages and all that. And to see my kids, as much as sometimes they get on my nerves, and maybe you're like, well, I don't think you should say that about your kids. Hey, you can spend time with them. Like, I mean, my, my kids are really good. I'm, I'm, I really believe that. But, but sometimes, you know, it's, I just need me time. And so God, he, he's given me friends that stick closer than a brother. God gives me second chances and third chances. But what kept me from finding purpose is I was trying to find purpose everywhere else except for the one place where I could find it. But I had, I had to get to a place where I said, you know what? I'm going to spend time with God. And what that looks like is reading Scripture. And what that looks like is prayer. And I know that sounds really churchy and, and all that, but it's true. But Jesus is full of grace. Isn't that good? Yeah? But Jesus is also full of truth. And the truth is, 
is that we are broken. And we're not just broken by bad choices or bad mistakes. We're broken deep in our core, and that's who we are. Mankind is broken. But God takes out our heart of stone, and he gives us a heart of flesh to where the people it seems like we can't love, God allows us to love. And what's, what bothers me, and I, I don't know, I, I shared this the first service, and um, I'm going to share it now, and, and I don't know exactly what you think or where your, um, what your views are, but what we read um, is that there's, there's this relationship with Jesus that we should strive for. And what the world tells us is that you're not good enough and there's no way that you can have a relationship with God and you are broken. That's what the world tells us. But Scripture says that you and I are worth it. Jesus said they are worth it, so I'm going to die on their behalf. Jesus said, I'm going to give them purpose. And we need to live our life on purpose. When it came to me, my mom, um, she was going to abort me because she was having an affair with another guy. So you think about, well, you feel like you have no purpose. Well, I was in an accident. But you know, I was made on purpose for a purpose. And it's not just me, it's you. You're made on purpose for, for a purpose. But the reality, what we see in Scripture is, is that there's this, um, and I know if you don't have a church background, you're like, oh, don't go here. But just, just hear me out. Can you hear me out? Like, we see that Jesus on the cross, he told um, one of the guys that was next to him, he said, hey, today you will be with me in paradise. This heaven. But then there's this also this other thing called hell and what terrifies me is, is that we've been taught in America well if we pray a prayer then everything is just fine and if we go to church then everything's okay but this hell thing was not meant for you and I it's not scripture teaches that Hell was designed for Satan and his angel. And then you, you and I, we were made to have a relationship with God. And that's not church attendance. That's not how much money we give away. That's not how nice we are to other people, but it's a relationship with Jesus. It's those who believe in Jesus. And, and so what... What terrifies me is that I, I, I read Scripture and there's so much confusion when it comes to a relationship with Jesus and finding purpose. But I believe this. I believe Scripture is pretty clear when it comes to salvation and that you and I, we need Jesus more than we need our next breath. It's not us trying harder or doing better. Isn't that, isn't that kind of cool? But it's God changing us. And so there's action steps on that insert, and um, it's going to be here. But I'm going to give you a couple ideas on, all right, here's what we read, and here was where purpose is found. But here's a couple action steps. And I want you to figure out what steps you're going to take to try to find purpose. Um, so if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and want to explore that on that connect card, you can let us know. We'd love to follow up with you on that. And we believe, we believe, man, God can change anybody. We believe God can save anybody, right? Hello? Hey, if God saved Phil, he can save anybody. Yeah. Right? Those of you who don't know Phil watching online, I know 
you should come and meet him. But anyway, um, they're really confused right now. Um, but possible action steps. Look at this. Here's possible action steps. Reading your Bible, not just to read, but to seek God. And, and maybe, um, maybe you've been like me at times. If you have taken a step to read the Bible, it's easy just to read to check off that box instead of read to learn. And sometimes pride keeps us from doing that. Um, but maybe it's reading your Bible, not just to read, but to seek God. And um, right here, there's a sheet that looks like this inside the VIP room, and we will put it up on our website. But it just says, study the Bible and how to study the Bible. Um, and there's this acronym called SOAP. And w what it is is S is for scripture, and then O is for observations. And this is asking, our, what's going on in the passage? Um, who's the main character? What, um, what, who is this written to? And all kinds of things like this. Um, but then after that, there's application. Our, what does God want us to do with that? Then also prayer. Um, because it's cool if we can memorize Scripture. But, you know, if you, if you memorize Scripture... For example, if you memorize, okay, the Bible says love God and love others, but then we don't do that, I think it's just a colossal waste of time. But I, I believe if we have application, I believe that's evidence of us really seeking to follow God. And then from there, it may be intentional prayer. Um, maybe stepping away from everything. One of one things that I do to intentionally pray, um, because it's kind of hard to find peace in things, find quiet places, especially if you have kids. But for me, what I do, um, because if if you're broke down on the side of the road, people typically do not help you. Um, so if you pull off to the side of the road, no one bothers you. And so if you pull off the side of the road, you can pray. And it's um, but I'll admit that sometimes my prayer life is, hey, God, um, I'm going through this right now, or some friends are going through this right now. It's hard to find purpose in this. I don't understand. It sucks. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever, <laughs> you ever done something like that? But you know, this intentional prayer is praying, then give God room to speak. Um, give God room to implant some things in your heart and in your soul to let you know what steps to take. So all the hurt that we've been through and that we're going through and that we will come, um, don't waste it. Seek God and find purpose. And I believe that when you spend time with God, you can find purpose. You think we could do some of those things this week to find purpose? Um, I'm going to pray, and the band's going to come up and lead us in a few more songs. But if you want to talk um, anything about a relationship with Jesus, I'd love to talk with you. Um, Rusty to also be in the back. We'd love to um, connect with you in that way. But let's all bow our heads, and we're going to pray together.